Okay. Good morning. The Prince George's County Planning Board is now in session. We have the draft minutes of the Planning Board meeting of June 20th of 2019. Is there a motion? Approve approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Mr. Cole, you're on for the corporate um, budget amendment, for the 2020 budget amendment. Good morning. For the record, John Kroll, Corporate Budget Director. Uh, before you this morning is a uh, budget amendment to the adop recently adopted budget uh, when we, uh, in our haste, when we put together the budget, uh, the additional piece in the park fund for the uh, youth services division uh, got put in the wrong division. Uh, budget wise, or adoption wise, we're just moving it. Uh, and that's the point of the uh, first part of this uh, uh, request. The second two parts, um, and Melissa Ford is here to back me up uh, as well, on them are additional uh, moves that uh, need to take place uh, within the uh, recreation fund and uh, f for one and for the second is a uh, moving a couple accounting units within the uh, park police and management services uh, both for the uh, um, um, to better manage um, all of these aspects um, do you wish to go into any more detail or do you wish nope. to ask any questions any questions is there a motion move approval Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Pursuant to section 3-305B3 and B7, we need a motion to go into closed session to consider the acquisition of real property for public purpose and matters directly related thereto and to discuss possible acquisition from the University of Maryland of an interest in a parcel in Riverdale in exchange for a parcel owned by the commission and to consult with council. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Okay, we need a motion to come out of closed session. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. We need a motion to ratify um, the action taken in closed session. So moved. Second. Um, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. I know. Um, so we're about to start the rest of the, the agenda, and I'm going to start with some announcements. Uh, first sure. of all, we, we had a number of losses over the intervening week, and I'd like to acknowledge those people who have passed on. I'm going to start with Judge Frank Cradiville. Judge Frank Cradiville was the administrative judge for the district court in Prince George's County. Um, who, who served for, for many, many years. We had, many of us had the pleasure of appearing before him and um, um, working with him in some capacity. So we want to remember Judge Frank Cradiville. We saw, happened to see his widow yesterday and his son and daughter um, at a memorial service for Judge Lombardi, who also passed. So um, we want to acknowledge him and his family. And uh, Art Papa Funk Neville, age uh, 81, who was the keyboardist and singer and founding member of the Meters and the Neville br uh, Brothers. Um, a huge New Orleans group and uh, just, just renowned, part of a renowned musical family. Robert Morgenthau, age, age 99, long time Manhattan district attorney and the inspiration for the Law and Order TV series. Um, uh, Mac, um, Maxim I'm probably not saying this right, Dadashiv, the age 28, the Russian boxer who died after suffering a bra brain injury at the fight at MGM National Harbor. Elijah Pumsey Green, a major league second baseman and shortstop. He was the first African-American player for the Boston Red Sox, um, in making the Red Sox the very last major league team to integrate its roster. Edith Irby Jones, age 91, pioneering African-American doctor who, who aspired to be a doctor after losing a sister to typhoid fever in the 30s. Um, she was the first black student to matriculate in an all-white medical school in the South um, and was an inspiration to the first African-American U.S. Surgeon General, um, Jocelyn Elders. Mitch Petrus, age 32, former NFL New York Giants offensive lineman and Super Bowl winner. Um, Rachel Parkinson, age 32, the hiker from Severn who died from heat-related medical emergency at Great Falls. Karen Brown, age 11, fatally shot in Southeast DC after a series of fights involving children and adults. Rucker Hauer, um, actor best known for co-starring with Harrison Ford in Blade Runner. 
Um, and then for any of you who may have uh, suffered a loss of which we are unaware, please know that we remember you um, in our thoughts and prayers. If we can have a moment of silence, please. And Okay, maybe. All right, thank you. Um, so it is July uh, 25th, uh, and we have a couple of announcements about July. First of all, um, July is, is um, Bereaved Parents Awareness Month. We have many parents um, who are who, in the commission and elsewhere who have endured the worst kind of loss there is, and that is a loss of a child. So we want to remember those of you who have lost children um, and, and those people in our universe who have lost children. Um, it is also Women's Motorcycle Month. I don't know if we have any present here today. <laughs> Tour de France Month, National Parks and Recreation Month, and Self Care Month. Okay. Um, and it's also the last planning board hearing before our August recess. Can you say hallelujah? <laughs> okay. Um, it is International, July 25th is International Intern Day. So we had, last week we had our interns here and we were, they were introduced to the board. But yesterday, um, the interns gave a presentation during the planning director's new employee um, planning department um, um, update meeting. And um, our planning director did a marvelous job yesterday. We had new employees who were introduced to us. They are fabulous, a nice cross section. They are fabulous. And we got to meet the interns. I mean, the private sector, you all need to meet these interns because you're going to be hiring them one day. Um, so also, OK. So July 25th, 1975, David Bowie released his iconic what? I know some of you all out there know that. Larry Tab, you're standing up. Okay, David Bowie released his iconic song, Four Letters. Fame, there you go, fame, okay. Um, July 25th, 1850, gold was discovered in Demdare Hills in Oregon. In 1918, Annette Adams of California was sworn in as the first woman DA in the United States, and that was um, in the state of California. July 25th, 1952, Puerto Rico became a self-governing United States Commonwealth, and clearly the citizens in Puerto Rico, uh, the residents and citizens there know how to take care of business. Yes, yes. <laughs> so I'll leave it at that. Um, July 25th, 1952, the US, United States performed nuclear testing at the Nevada test site. Um, 1966, the Supremes released You Can't Hurry Love. 72, the U.S. health officials finally conceded that African Americans were used in a, a 40 year, as guinea pigs in a 40 year horrific syphilis experiment. It was awful. Um, anyway, um, and f July 25th, 1941, was the birth date of Emmett Till, who at age 14 was abducted, brutally beaten, disfigured, mutilated, and then shot and cast into the water. Um, he was a Chicago-based native who was, this all occurred when he was visiting Mississippi and allegedly made a comment to um, a, a white woman um, and so the, the husband and the brother-in-law went and, and, and abducted, ad, mm, abducted him, abducted, no, that's what, got him, oh, <laughs> and abducted, the, yeah. abducted him. And two defendants were charged and acquitted in 1955. And later they bragged in 1956 that they actually did kill him. Um, so his mom decided, Mamie decided that they would have an open casket, which became a catalyst so they could see his disfigured body and became a catalyst for the next phase of the civil rights movement, which was the Montgomery bus boycott. So it's important, and the casket can actually be seen at the Smithsonian Museum. Um, and it's important that we remember that history because it was it's just a critical time. So, um, and, and, and we need to know from whence we came so it never happens again. Um, finally, I'm going to go to a subject that we know a lot about. In the food department, July is National Baked Beans Month, National Blueberries Month, National Hot Dog Month, National Watermelon Month, um, National Deli Sandwich Month, National Grilling Month, and National Picnic, Picnic Month. Clearly, people eat a whole lot in July. There must be a lot of dieting going on in August. 
And I think, I, um, I think that's all I have for my announcements at this moment. Um, I have one or two more momentarily. Now, um, I do want to make a statement for anybody within our listening audience. Last week we had a hearing on a detailed site plan for Snapper, and I wanted to make sure that everyone knows the record. The decision was made by the um, planning board, and the record is closed. We're still getting comments of, on the hearing um, or items sent into the record, but the record is closed on that. Um, so even as of this morning, we were getting some, so I wanted to make that statement. And without further ado, I'm going to return to our agenda. Is there anyone here to oppose the staff's recommendations on item 4D? Move approval of item 4D, madam, and, cons uh, uh, cons <laughs> with, and on the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Okay, we're going in this order for now. 9, 17, 18, 19, 20. So item 9. What was it again? 917. Yeah, their resolution. 9, 17, 18, 19, 20. Item 9. Item 9. Okay. Okay. DDS. We, we, it's, a, it's a motion for a continuance. I, isn't there someone else who may want to speak on this? Okay, Mr. Burt, you can, go, you can get started. Good morning, Madam Chair. Is the mic on? says it is. Yes. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the Planning Board. Uh, for the record, my name is Thomas Burke with the Urban Design Section. Uh, the, the, this application, Departure from Design Standards DDS 658 for Oxen Hill McDonald's. Uh, the applicant is requesting a continuance uh, of this case to allow for, uh, to uh, uh, align this case with the detailed site plan, which will be held uh, September 12th, okay. Planning Board date. Thank you. We, have, we, we continue to allow other matters to that date, too. So, okay, are there any questions of Mr. Burt? Okay, so, Mr. Gibbs, come on down. I see good, you smiling. Good morning, good morning. I can't Chair, imagine why you're so happy today. Sure, uh, I, 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 you'll hear from me uh, later on a couple of other I know matters. we will. <laughs> okay. But anyhow, uh, good morning, Edward Gibbs, uh, representing McDonald's, and uh, we do, in fact, wish for the case to be continued so that it can be heard with the underlying matters, the detailed site plan and the parking departure, all on September 12th. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any questions? There's no one on our sign-up sheet for this. Um, is, is there a motion? Move approval of the continuance of DDS 658 to September 12th. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? So, Mr. Gibbs, it looks like a happy birthday is in order, Mr. Gibbs. So oh. everybody say happy birthday, happy Mr. Birthday. Gibbs. Happy birthday. Okay. Happy birthday. Okay. So hold tight, though. Hold tight, though. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes Aye. have it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Um, item 17. Good morning, items. Madam Chair, members of the um, Planning Board. Yeah. For the record, Sherry Connor with the Subdivision and Zoning Section. Item 17 is a draft resolution for reconsideration heard by the Planning Board on July 18th, 2019. The resolution reflects the approval of the Planning Board and staff recommends approval. Okay. Um, are there any questions? I um I don't seem to have there's I don't have a sign up sheet for item 17 but is there uh, um I'm 17. Is there uh is there anyone here to speak on this? Is there a motion? We will approve of Madam Chair. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. 18. Is there Eight, you know what, 18 is a resolution. Yes. Is there, you have no corrections or additions. No. Is there a motion to approve? Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, Ms. Let the record reflect Ms. Fielder is present, does not um, wish to speak, and is in agreement. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Item 19. Once again, uh, Madam Chair, Sherry Connor for, with the subdivision and zoning section. Item 19 is a draft resolution for 711 Marble Pike. This case was heard before the Planning Board on July 18, 2019 as well. There is one correction to the resolution. Okay. Um, this was pursuant to the record on July 18th, noting a typographical error in the staff report. The resolution has been duly corrected, and I do have a copy of that for the board. Okay, thank you. Um, are, th are there any questions? Um, is anyone here on this? Mr. Tedesco, okay, please. Um,
Okay, we have the revised um, resolution before us um, with the correction as indicated. Um, is, uh, is there a motion to approve? Move approval with the correction as indicated by staff. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Um, yeah. Okay. okay, item 20. Sherry Connor subdivision and zoning section for the record. Item 20 is the final plat of subdivision for JDA Baltimore Avenue, parcel one. The final plat has been drafted in accordance with the approved preliminary plan of subdivision 4-17042 and staff recommends approval of the final plat. Yep. Um, are there any questions? Was there anyone to speak? Is there a motion? Move approval. Second. You have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Item 21. 21 will be followed by uh, 15. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, again, Jill Kozak from the Urban Design Section. Item 21 is a uh, resolution for a DSP that was heard on July 18th. There are no changes to Thank the resolution. You. Is there a motion? Move, Move approval. approval, Madam Chair. Second. Second. <laughs> a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Item 15 and 16. Followed by 13. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. For the record, I'm Christopher Davis with the Subdivision and Zoning Section. Item number 15 is a request for a waiver of the Rules of Procedure, and item number 16 is a re reconsideration request for a preliminary plan of subdivision 4-10020 for the Vineyards 2. The preliminary plan was approved on November 8, 2012, and the resolution was adopted by the Planning Board on November 29, 2012. By letter dated June 28, 2019, Mr. Howler, representing the applicant, requested the waiver of the rules of procedure first and, if granted, a reconsideration of con Condition 15E in furtherance of substantial public interest due to other good cause or inadvertence which resulted in an error in reaching the final decision. Condition 15E relates to the timing of construction of the uh, master plan Piscataway Creek Trail by the applicant. If the request for a waiver of the rules of procedure and the reconsideration request for the preliminary plan are granted, staff will provide further analysis on the merits of the request at a later planning board hearing. This concludes staff's presentation. Thank you. Are there any questions? Birthday boy, Mr. Gibbs. Oh, yes. Good, good morning, Chair Hewlett and members of the board. Edward Gibbs, uh, an attorney with offices in Largo, uh, here on behalf of the applicant in this case. Uh, this is Mr. Haller's case, but as he likes to do, he, he likes to go on vacation every year and, and leave some cases with me to handle for him. Um, so uh, let me just say, do, can, can, you, can you pull this up, please? It's, it's in the uh, back up. So this is just the request for the waiver of the rules of procedure since we're not filing within 14 days and the reconsideration, but not the merits. You're just obviously going to decide whether or not you can, you can do this. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm actually okay. looking for this. Okay. Is there, is there a motion to waive the rules? Move approval, Madam Chair. Second. Sure. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. So let's get to the crux of the matter. Okay. Thank you very much. So, uh, you know, this I, I don't know why we can't. This is in the back. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I, 
the, the case was originally. Uh, Can you raise the microphone a little bit, yeah. please? The Thanks. case was originally approved in 2012. Uh, the property was split zoned R80 and RT, and it's bisected by a PEPCO right of way line, a high transmission line. And so the portion of the property to the, to the northeast of the transmission line is R80 and was proposed for single family detached uh, development. The portion of the property to the south and southwest was the RT piece and it was proposed for townhomes uh, and a 23 acre conveyance to park and planning uh, with a 1,788 linear foot master plan trail uh, running through the along the edge of the park and planning property. The what happened though was that when two weeks before the case was going to be heard, the subregion five master plan and sectional map amendment was reversed by the circuit court. And with that reversal came a down zoning of the property from the RT zone. And, and so townhomes were no longer possible to be developed. Uh, consequently, the townhome piece, it was too late to amend the plan and still get to the planning board. So the, the piece that was going to be developed with townhomes to the south and west of the transmission line uh, was designated as an out parcel. Uh, condition 15 had five subparts, uh, A through E, and uh, and and all and it, they all dealt with the con the bonding, uh, planning, and construction of the master plan trail. Uh, every subpart, with the exception of uh, condition 15E, which specified that the trail had to be completed and open for use prior to issuance of the 60th building permit. So let me ask you this yeah. question. In accordance mm -hmm. with your statement, with your letter, um, for the letter submitted by Mr. Haller and according to the staff recommendations um, and everything that's detailed in here, the, you, it cannot be completed by the 60th building be. permit, it but you're requesting be. the 64th. And the, parks, and, and the Parks Department agrees the condition agrees needs to be it. revised. I see that. So I, it I don't need to go into a, a, nope. a great deal of detail as long as we all agree that that's the case. Thank you very much. Um, so, um, is there anyone else here to speak on this matter? And then and and the grounds were for um, um, furtherance of a substantial public interest and in inadvertence or other good cause that resulted in this um, error. That, that, okay. that is correct. All are set forth in our letter. Thank you. Okay, is there a motion? Madam Chair, I move that we uh, approve the request for reconsideration for 4-10020 for the reasons as uh, just stated on the record. Second. Um, we have a motion and a second. Let me just make sure that the motion includes that it's specifically limited to question to um, 15 condition 15E. 15 15 yes. Okay. Um, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed. The ayes have it. So that's um, item 15 and 16. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Happy birthday. Thanks. He'll be back. Okay. Um, okay. So 15 and 16. Um, 13 followed by 8 followed by 5. This is her 13, Michael. 13, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sign up Um, did he, Mr. Pasby, do you have the sign-up sheets? Okay. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Benjamin Ryan with Countywide Planning seeking your approval. Okay, you need to uh, be a little bit closer. I don't, it, it doesn't seem to be as effective as I'm okay. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Benjamin Ryan with Countywide Planning seeking your approval to transmit staff recommendations. Before the planning board today is mandatory referral 1910F, Mount Rainier Civic Center. Yeah. 
The site is located in planning area 68, Council District 2 in Mount Rainier. The site outlined here in red is located directly east of the intersection of Rhode Island Avenue and Perry Street. I think it's not here. Site vicinity map shows the project site outlined in red. Rhode Island, Rhode Island Avenue has primarily commercial features in the immediate surroundings. The surrounding areas to the east are primarily made up of single family homes. The master plan right of way shows the property along Rhode Island Avenue, which is a collector road. The site is zoned MUTC, mixed use town center. Adjacent property to the east is zoned R55, single family detached residential. All other adjacent properties are zoned MUTC. The project site is co-located at 3405 Rhode Island Avenue and one municipal place. Both properties are owned by the city of Mount Rainier. Potts Hall, also known as Star Hall, is located at 3405 Rhode Island Avenue. It's used primarily for community gatherings and meetings. It was recently designated as a historic site by the Prince George's County Historic Preservation Commission. City Hall, located at one municipal place, is the primary location for Mount Rainier government functions. This project seeks to renovate Potts Hall and construct a 1,250 square foot addition which will connect the two buildings. The lobby addition will be 24 and a half feet in height and will be ADA compliant. The renovated Potts Hall will feature a council chamber room with audience seating for 92 people. Additionally, Potts Hall will feature a new audio visual room and a new storage room. The exterior plaza will feature a new entry canopy, stairs, railing, and exterior paving. This slide shows a site plan with the new addition in red. Potts Hall is the property to the north. City Hall is the property to the south. Construction is scheduled for fall of 2019. Approximate construction timeline is 12 months to be completed in one phase. Upon completion, Potts Hall will maintain regular business hours and will host city council meetings, community meetings, and holiday celebrations during non-business hours. Permitting is scheduled for fall 2019. The applicant will need to obtain building, utility, and electrical permits from the Prince George's County Department of Permitting, Inspections, and Enforcement. Further permitting is required by the Prince George's County Historic Preservation Commission. Planning Department mailed letters to local municipalities, registered associations, and an expanded area of adjacent properties totaling 70. At this time, no information was provided to the applicant about outreach activities conducted by the City of Mount Rainier. Prince George's County Historic Preservation Commission reviewed this project at their July meeting, which took place on July 16th. Copies of the memo from this meeting have been distributed. We have received correspondence from the Historic Preservation Commission detailing their findings and conclusions. The only recommendation from the Historic Preservation Commission states that the applicant shall obtain a historic area work permit for any work required within the environmental setting of Star Potts Hall. Further staff recommendations are discussed in the staff report and planning board backup. I'd be happy to go over them if you wish. If not, staff recommends transmittal of the staff report with recommendations to the applicant. And this concludes staff presentation. Thank you, are there any questions? Um, Mr. Donnelly, do you wish to speak? Oh, only to respond to questions, okay. Okay, um, are there any questions? So everything's set forth and we can, um, depending on the motion, we can um, pass on our comments. Um, is there a motion? Madam Chair, move that we accept the recommendations of staff and approve transmittal of MR-1910F to Mr. Brian Donnelly. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, the ayes have it. I item 13, I mean item eight followed by five.
Good morning, Madam Chair and Good members. Good morning, Ms. Turnquist. <laughs> Good morning, Madam Chair and members okay. of the board. For the record, Amber Turnquist with the subdivision and zoning section. I think it's that microphone over there, but okay. It must be. Okay. Yeah. Is that better? It's a little better, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Item number eight before you is a reconsideration hearing for the Claggett property. By letter dated June 3rd, 2019, Robert Antonetti, representing Toll Brothers, requested a waiver and reconsideration of the pre preliminary plan of subdivision. This hearing is on the merits of that request. The applicant requests deletion of three conditions of approval that require the retention of the Keokuk House and potential archaeological exploration. The site is located in central Prince George's County within planning area 78 and council district 6. More specifically, the site is located on the south side of Ritchie Marlboro Road, approximately 2,000 feet south of its intersection with Westphalia Road. The subject site is zoned RR. It is partially within the military installation overlay zone for height. The aerial photograph shows the subject site is platted with some development. The site map shows topography of the property, which has numerous steep slopes. The site is adjacent to Ritchie Marlboro Road, a master plan arterial roadway. The subdivision shows 1,058 lots and 36 parcels. The preliminary plan of subdivision was approved by the planning board on October 28, 2004. <coughs> there were two existing houses which were, were proposed to be retained at the time of the preliminary plan of subdivision as shown in the center image. On the left and highlighted in red is Keokuk and the site of the cabin at Keokuk, which was located to the rear of the house. The cabin at Keokuk was believed to be the quarters of enslaved persons, but was determined through archaeological investigations to date to the 20th century. Keokuk was removed from the historic sites and districts plan in 1994. On the right and highlighted in green is Engleside, an 1880s farmhouse which was also removed from the historic sites and districts plan in 1994 and has since burnt down. The applicant is requesting the deletion of three conditions of approval that require the retention of the Keokuk House and further archaeological studies at, as set forth in conditions 17 through 19. Staff recommends approval of the reconsideration for the deletion of conditions 17 through 19 of the Prince George's County Planning Board Resolution Number 04-255, as detailed in the Historic Preservation Memo dated June 20th, 2019. If the Planning Board approves the reconsideration, staff will, recommend, will prepare an amended resolution which deletes the aforementioned conditions and revises related findings regarding retention of the two structures. The amended resolution will be placed on a future planning board agenda for adoption. This concludes staff's presentation. Um, thank you, Ms. Turnquist. Let me make sure I understood correctly. I think we had um, um, all the backup. Uh, basically, the reconsideration, we heard a lot during the request mm -hmm. for reconsideration, and it was to delete question, um, conditions 17, 18, 19 regarding the cabin and key cup, because the archaeological investigations could demonstrate that the quarters could not have been, well, the, the property could not have been used as quarters Slave. for the enslaved. Correct. And also, it was removed from the historical sites and district plan in 1994. Correct. Okay, so that's it. Okay, so Mr. Antonetti, what you got to add to that? Morning, Madam Chair. For the record, Robert Antonetti at the law firm of Shipley and Horn. Um, here with my partner, Arthur Horn, and Mr. Tom Mateo from Toll Brothers. Uh, we do agree with the staff's recommendation in this case. Um, I do have, just for the record, I do have two letters from uh, engineers uh, dealing, uh, dealing with the structure of the house and the condition of it. I'd like to put that in the record. Okay. And um, what's being handed out are two letters, um, one delayed, dated July 15th from Geolab Laboratories, Inc. And the second is uh, a July 6th letter um, from Ali Shakiri, professional engineer.
Okay, so we have the, um, the first letter is dated July 15th um, and uh, refers to the, it's from um, Geotech Laboratories signed by G. Matthew Norris and basically talking about the, the, the structure, the condition of the structure. And the second one is uh, dated July 6th um, and it's from Ali Shakari, I guess. Um, um, and also talking about the poor condition of the structure. So we'll have the first one from Geolab marked and accepted into the records applicants exhibit number one. And the second one, dated July 6, will be applicants exhibit number two. And we accept that as well. Thank you. And Anything else, Mr. Antonin? Uh, no, no, essentially the, um, the letters speak for themselves. I actually had the pleasure of, of going to the site yesterday with Mr. Matea. I walked through the house, um, saw its condition. Uh, it's really, it's, its foundation is, inc is incredibly uh, challenged and, and sloping significantly. And uh, I wanted to see it firsthand myself. So um, Mr. Matea is here. If you have any questions as to the restoration efforts of Toll Brothers for this house, the unfortunate effort, um, tragedy at the Ingleside house, which was the more substantial house, which Toll has spent thousands of dollars restoring, uh, which caught fire when the fire suppression system was being uh, installed at the end of the restoration, unfortunately. Um, but uh, we're, we're excited about uh, moving forward, securing the site, and uh, developing a single family home on each of these farmhouse sites since we're near the end, very end of this uh, very successful project. So we thank you for your consideration. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Thank you. Um, are there any questions at this point of Mr. Antonetti? There is no one else on the sign-up sheet. Was there anyone else who wished to speak on this matter? Is there a motion? Madam Chair, move that we accept the analysis and recommendation of staff and approve the reconsideration of preliminary plan 4-04080 to delete and delete conditions 17, 18, and 19. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, opposed? The ayes have. You're opposed? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, one, one opposed. Okay. Um, then we have items, next we'll have item five, uh, followed by 14. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the Planning Board. For the record, I am Thomas Burke with the Urban Design Section. The proposal before you, listed as item five on the agenda, refers to specific design plan SDP 0511-04 for Collington Center, which includes a type two tree conservation plan TCP2-052-06-03. As a matter of housekeeping, I'd like to make sure that the board has received the additional backup, uh, a memo from staff dated July 24th, 2019, with revised findings and conditions. July 24th? That's correct. Yes. July. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So with this application, the applicant is seeking approval of an amendment to uh, this uh, specific design plan to change the building type and develop a 130,143 square foot consolidated storage facility and 29 spaces for outdoor vehicle storage. The site is located in the eastern part of Prince George's County in, council, in uh, excuse me, planning area 74A and Council District 6. More specifically, the site is located southwest of the intersection of US 301 and Queens Court in Collington Center. <clears throat> The subject property is in the EIA zone within the Collington Center planned business community with commercial and, excuse me, with commercial and industrial uses 
to the north, south, and west. To the east across 301 are residential and farm properties in the RA zone. These properties also mark the boundary for environmental strategy area three, formerly known as the rural tier, whereas the subject property is in ESA two, formerly known as the developing tier. Uh, this is important to note as it relates to the elimination of signs projecting onto and across 301. This aerial photo illustrates the current conditions of the property. Two lots on the overall site are currently developed with, with a FedEx and a Lazy Boy Warehouse Distribution Center. The proposed consolidated storage facility will be located in this area, which is currently cleared and rough graded. The site is relatively flat, sitting slightly below the elevation of 301 and does contain regulated wetlands, which are delineated on the TCP2. The site has frontage on US 301, a master plan freeway. Okay. This bird's eye view further illustrates the existing conditions of the property. This plan shows the ultimate built out condition of the overall site with the two existing buildings here and the proposed units here. The subject of this application is an amendment to the previously approved SDP and involves a lot line adjustment related to changing the, related to changing the building type on these lots here. The plan proposes construction of a three-story, 130,143 square foot consolidated storage facility comprising a total of 1,184 storage units with 29 spaces for recreational vehicle storage. Also shown are the six required loading spaces, four provided inside in a, in a drive-through section of the building and two provided outside. <clears throat> Regulated wetlands and associated buffers are shown on the plan with forest, cons excuse me, with forest preservation and reforestation provided to meet all woodland conservation requirements on site. The proposed architecture features a mix of masonry, textured exterior insulation, metal panels, and glass, and primarily finished in two tones of gray. The office area is distinguished with a full with full floor, excuse me with full storefront fenestration and a decorative green trimmed metal canopy above the window line. An illuminated building sign is shown on the east elevation facing 301. However, the approved CDP includes conditions restricting the use of building mounted signs, the details of which can be found on page 12 of the staff report. As a result of these prior conditions, staff is recommending the removal of the sign on the east side of the building facing 301 and to revise the, to revise the uh, sign on the north facade facing Queens Court to be externally illuminated. illuminated. A curved masonry sign in keeping with the CDP standards is provided on the northeast corner of the site. This additional sign, uh, excuse me, d additional monument sign is proposed at the entrance on Queens Court. In accordance with the basic plan, loading bay service docks and storage areas shall not be visible from, from US 301. Landscape plannings and a fence were, are proposed along the frontage of the property shown here. However, staff found this wasn't sufficient and provided a condition to include an additional screening, screening fence and gate at the entrance to the RV storage area. The applicant is offering an alternative which they will present following this presentation. Staff has reviewed this alternative and finds it acceptable. Uh, the urban design staff recommends that the planning board adopt the findings of this report and approve specific design plan SDP 0511-04 and TCP2 052-06-03 for Collington Center, subject to the conditions contained in the staff report to delay it, uh, dated July 9th, 2019, as, and as modified by the staff member memorandum dated July 24th, 2019. This concludes staff presentation. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Burke. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Are there any questions? Mr. Horn. <coughs> Uh, 
Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the Planning Board. For the record, Arthur Horn, Law Offices of Shipley and Horn in Largo, Maryland. Here on behalf of the applicant, uh, we have uh, MRPI Queen Court LLC, represented by Mr. Reed Townsend here. We have the civil engineer from uh, Ben Dyer, uh, Ms. Cal Kevin Calouette, who's here. Uh, <clears throat> first, just want to thank Mr. Burke, who, as you see, has uh, done a fantastic job in going through the uh, uh, analysis uh, of what's going on. We uh, agree with staff's recommendation. <laughs> Mr. Horn, can you raise the mic just a little bit, please? Thank we you. agree with staff's recommendation and conditions with a few uh, minor adjustments uh, that we can propose. Give it and take uh, it away. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, just a few, and they all minor. I think we think we have the concurrence. But before I turn that in, I want to uh, uh, also, as uh, Mr. Burke mentioned, one of the conditions deals with uh, screening, and we have a, a plan showing the additional screening, which we'd like to uh, have marked as exhibits, uh, applicants exhibit number one, and the conditions could be, the proposed changes could be uh, applicants condition number two. Okay, hold on. Wait a minute. What's I, so the conditions that were just handed out? You're proposing this would be at two. What's number one? Oh, number one. What is, is passing out now? Yes. Which is which is what? What is the plan showing the additional landscaping that uh, was suggested and proposed okay. for the okay, site? So Mr. Mr. Cosby, here's an extra one. Okay, so we're going to, uh, um, as indicated, the um, the plan depicting the additional landscaping is. Accepted into the record as applicants exhibit number one, mm -hmm. and the proposed revised conditions are accepted into the record as applicants exhibit number two. Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, as you <clears throat> heard, that there's a memo dated yesterday that was uh, that made some additional changes and stuff, which uh, we can appreciate. Uh, though that and and we will uh, agree to add the conditions to that, with one minor uh, exception to that. One of the things that uh, the backup does it, it uh, talks about the fire response time <clears throat> and the fact that since we're out of the fire response time they recommend conditions which we don't have any problems adding the only issue is <clears throat> the reference that's made by staff refers to the subdivision section uh, when we're here at the SDP under subtitle 27 so I don't believe that you can generally refer back to the subdivision section when you're talking about adequacy at a time of uh, SDP. But nevertheless, the conditions that were proposed uh, are, are acceptable to us. So I just wanted to state that. But uh, in applicants exhibit uh, number uh, two, <laughs> we have a proposed change to condition 1C that says uh, provide uh, additional landscape and screening along US 301 uh, as set forth in applicants exhibit number one is the language that we added and that's what you have in front of you uh, and uh, staff urban design had an opportunity previously to review what we were going to propose as applicants exhibit number one as an alternative to their condition of 1C. Okay, Mr. Burke. Staff concurs with these changes. All right. So are with you all of, all of them? Yeah, that's right. With all of these okay. conditions. Correct. Thank you. I have a question, Madam Chair. Okay, um, Commissioner Geraldo. Mr. Horn, I'm, what, what type of additional landscape screening is being proposed? <clears throat> it is, uh, Kevin, uh, what the addition of the type of screening, what kind of trees is it, do you know? Something that would be evergreen or... Evergreen, arborvitae arbor trees, and leaf uh, sprouts. Will it accomplish the same thing in terms of uh, covering the site as the fence would? But how long in maturity, do you know? You can come up and introduce yourself. Because <laughs> apparently, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Burton, that the, the issue is, is, is to prevent the visibility from the highway. Is that right? That's correct. Yes, yeah, so I'm just interested in knowing with regards to the type of screening that you're proposing, how long will it take for it to accomplish the same as a fence? Uh, for the record, Kevin Calouette with Ben Dyer Associates. Uh, we're located in Woodmore area, um, Madam Chairman. Um, we're proposing to install eight-foot trees at the initial, mm -hmm. and that will provide the screening necessary. So every year after that would be, 
you know, no, I understand. Okay, so okay. they're gonna. So, would you mind if we put a foot in there so that we know that that's what, that's yeah, what you're proposing? That's fine. Okay. It's, I is believe that, it's on our drawing. Yes. Yeah. It's on the drawing. Staff concurs with that. Concurs. Concurs. Yeah. Okay. That's the only question I had. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. Okay. So, so we, we, I think we have it covered, and when we say uh, we'll, we'll provide a, additional landscape screen along 301, as set forth in the applicant's exhibit number one. It does say eight so foot in applicant's exhibit, exhibit number one. one. Right. Yes. yes. Yep. But it, it's okay if you put it there, though, because yeah. yeah. some of us have aging eyes, and it's, that's okay. little teeny print. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then uh, one I asked us to remove the barbed wire fence details on a specific sheet of the SDP. Well, that actually, the, that's not subject to this application. The barbed wire fence is up for another project and it's not related to it. So we, we, we can't, so we sh recommend striking that condition. And, I, and staff concurs, I believe. Um, 2C is to revise. Mr. Horn, I got one question. So I, I'm just confused because if we adopt it the way you have, you got it stricken on one and then it's there. See what I mean? Well, no, that's just the way they're illustrating it. Yeah, I, yeah. I was just showing it exists yeah. and we're asking in red, uh, what's, what's located in red, we're asking to be stricken. What's located in blue, we're asking to be added. All right. Yes. I, I understand that part, but I'm just, just. It looks that way. Okay. It's confusing. I'm, okay. Do you understand? I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, condition 2B, uh, we just changed the word uh, structures to buildings. Uh, 2D, uh, is to adjust the planning schedule to reduce the amount of red maples proposed to no more than 10% because there is, it is 10%. So 2 is the correct. Uh, term, I guess I can wish I okay. to use. Uh, 2G, uh, yes, it says provide owner's awareness certificate to cover the sheet for signature by, and it said the appropriate party. Well, the appropriate party is the client here who's the owner of lots 13, 19, 22, and 23. So, so we just specify that. Uh, <clears throat> condition three is one of the ones that uh, is underlined in black because that's the additional condition language that was added by staff in their memo on the 24th, uh, which says that the final plat shall include the notes in condition 1J and above required fire rescue mitigation. And we are recommended that that be stricken. We, we will agree to make it a condition and we will put it on our plans, but not the final plat because if something changes, then you have to go back and, and uh, you know, amend the final plat and that's costly and time consuming and there's no reason for it. Uh, that so, and I think staff concurs with that. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Burke okay. said he, he, staff concurs with these changes. Yes, yeah. and okay. so uh, with those uh, proposed conditions, uh, we uh, humbly ask the board to uh, approve the application with applicants' uh, suggested changes in uh, applicants' exhibit number two. Okay. Um, are there questions of Mr. Horn? I'd like to turn to our principal counsel, Ms. Borden, just to address, even though you agree with the condition, just to address, address the um, reference to the subdivision regulations in this specific design um, plan application. Thank you, Madam Chair. Deborah Borden, principal counsel. Uh, the way that this works is that there is a provision in the zoning ordinance that specifically says the development, and this is under the um, planning board action um, requirements for approval of an SDP, a specific design plan. So this is specific language that only applies to SDPs. And it says the development will be adequately served within a reasonable period of time with existing or programmed public <laughs> facilities, either shown in the appropriate CIP or provided as part of a private development or we're authorized pursuant to section 24-124. So you have a section in the zoning ordinance that is talking about APF requirements that happen at subdivision. And this has been a source of 
of confusion for a number of years because they're referring to something that happens at a different level of the development approval process, but it doesn't give us a new test. It just says you shall find adequacy. And so we've always felt that that it's not fair to the applicant for us to just make up a new test. We, we don't do that. We don't legislate. We don't design the test. That is something the district council has to do. And so in the absence of anything except this pointer to what happens at subdivision, we assume we're going to use the same test, but we have to make the finding. We meaning we have to make a recommendation and the planning board has to make that finding of adequate public facilities. And again, this section does not seem to only apply to a particular public facility. It, it applies to all of them, all of the ones that we do a test for because it's very general language. Again, that's, that's good sometimes and bad sometimes because it doesn't give us the specificity to understand did they want us to only test one particular public facility like transportation or are they resp are they uh, talking about everything in the absence of any specific detail we have to assume they're talking about everything and that's why we point back to the APF test it's the only one we have for fire EMS and that's why we've come up with the mitigation that we have in this case because this this project would fail the APF test for fire EMS. So my thank you. Thank you for that. Um, so is this one of these matters that will be addressed that will be remedied in our new zoning ordinance? Well, yes, it would be because we don't have SDPs anymore right. in our new ordinance. Right. We have site plans. Right. And all site plans are treated equally. Um, you know, no matter what zone you're in, you have a site plan, you have a preliminary plan. There aren't these different levels of, of approval applications. They're all standardized. So that should help a great deal. Okay. Great. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you. Well, I, I, I just will say, though, that the section that was cited by staff in the memo was not 24-124. It was 24-122.01. So that's a different standard. So I, 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 uh, principal counsel, she may be correct, but I don't know if that was the case particularly here, but it's moot because we agree with the, with the recommendations and the conditions. Excuse me, Madam Chair, Andre Checkley. Can you Mr. bring Horn, the microphone not, closer to you? Mr. Horn, I'm not sure what you're referring to because I'm looking at the staff report and it does say section 24124. I'm looking what at page are you the, on? The, I'm looking at the memorandum from Thomas Burke to Crystal Sanders Hancock that was sent to us yesterday, and it's cited 22 uh, 20, I'm sorry, 24-122.01 fire and rescue facilities. Yeah, yeah. but <laughs> it's, it's not. It's moot. It's moot. Okay. That's okay. Okay. Well, we'll look at it. You're agreeing to the conditions. Yes. If there's an error in the citation, we can address that at the uh, resolution, resolution stage. So, um, so are there any other questions? Uh, is there a motion? Madam Chair, I move that we adopt the findings of staff as, out, as outlined in staff's report and as further uh, modified in staff's memo dated July 24, 2019 and approve SDP-. 0511-04 and TCP2-052-06-2019 along with the associated conditions as outlined in staff's report and as further modified in staff's memo dated July 24, 2019 and as further revised in uh, applicant exhibit number two. Uh, and with respect to applicant exhibit number two, we just want to further I illustrate in condition 1C that the additional landscape screening would be uh, uh, at least eight feet tall. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. Okay. Item 14, followed by six and seven.
Okay. Okay, Miss Hancock. At the world. Yes. <laughs> Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, that's that's better. Sorry. I am Crystal Saunders Hancock, I'm acting planning uh, supervisor supervisor with the special projects section in the countywide planning countywide planning division seeking your approval to transmit staff uh, recommendations. Um, before the planning board today is mandatory referral number 1909 F Spectrum Solar. The site is located in planning area 76A, the Heights um, and council district seven in Oxon Hill. Um, the site is located, oh, I'm sorry, I said that already, I'm sorry. I'm pretty nervous, so forgive me, I'm sorry. The project vicinity map shows the project outlined in red. The site outlined here um, is located near the intersection of Southern Avenue and Wheeler Road. Southern Avenue is, is the dividing line between Prince George's County and the District of Columbia. Um, next, we have the existing zoning map, which indicates that the site is zoned um, MXT or mixed use transportation. The areas near the site are also MXT as well as residential and open space. The master plan right away shows Wheeler Road as a collector road um, that intersects with Wheeler Hill Drive, which is right here, um, and provides access to the subject property. Um, the proposed uh, site map indicates um, area selected for a solar, solar panel installation. Um, here's the natural features mapping of the existing site. Um, these are uh, pictures taken during the site visit um, of the existing conditions at the, at the facility. Next we have project features. This is a 70.34 acre vacant site located um, again in Oxon Hill, Maryland. The applicant is proposing the installation of ground mounted solar arrays um, as an interim use. Um, the arrays are proposed to be on previously disturbed areas which are parking lots. Um, the applicant is also proposing to generate 5.6 uh, megawatts, um, which needs approval from the Public Service Commission because it will uh, serve as an energy generation system. Um, next, we have um, the solar system guide, uh, solar energy system guidelines. Um, it is uh, this project is consistent with regards to woodland conservation. It will a uh, revised TCP2 will be needed. Um, and there is no clearing um, of the property which is consistent with the guidelines. Um, we do note that final approvals will be needed from several agencies, including the Prince George's County Planning Department, Soil Conservation District, um, DPI, as well as um, the Maryland Department of Environment, the PSC, and the um, DNR, which will be through the Power Plan Research um, Program. Um, community out in terms of community outreach um, notification letters were sent to adjoining property owners and civic associations we have heard I've received calls from three different residents asking about the project 
Um, a meeting was also hosted by the applicant on Thursday, July 11th. Um, this, uh, we do have recommendations, but the applicant uh, wants to amend some of the recommendations that we have, and I think he'll speak to that when we, when we get, um, when he comes up to present. Um, and this concludes staff presentation. You, you indicated you did get uh, inquiries from three of the citizens in that area. Yes, ma'am. Do we know specifically what those uh, inquiries were? Um, uh, well, I've received two of them before the, before the actual meeting. They just wanted to know exactly what was the property, what, what exactly was going on with the property. Um, the other person wanted to know um, like what kind of impacts would, would occur to their property. If anything, they wanted to, they understood the project, but wanted to know specifically what else, what kind of impacts would ha occur to them mm -hmm. as a homeowner. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And were they satisfied with your response? Yes. Okay. I think she did. We, we mm -hmm. spoke, she, I asked her if she had any other questions to please give me a call back. Um, I encouraged her to come today, but she had another appointment and couldn't make it. Okay. And we, spoke we do have today. those specific names. Right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Is Are there, there any other? Oh, go ahead, yeah, Commissioner. Is Geraldo. there going to be any planting for bees? Mm -hmm. uh, we are uh, doing a herbaceous cover. Yeah, so okay. we are doing a pollinator. Yes. Okay, thank you. We recommend it. Are there any other questions to Ms. Hancock? Mr. Gibbs. Good morning, Chair Hewlett and members of the Planning Board. Edward Gibbs, an attorney with offices in Largo. Pleased to be here on behalf of the applicant, uh, Spectrum Solar, and representatives from the applicant are uh, in the audience this morning as well. This is my partner's case, um, and, and I, I do know a little bit about it, though. Um, so, you know, we're dealing with a piece of property here, uh, which ultimately is proposed for mixed-use development. It was MXT under the Development District Overlay Zone. Uh, because of its proximity to the metro station, Southern Avenue metro station. And, you know, our clients fully intend to develop ultimately a project consistent with uh, transit-oriented development uh, and with density uh, commensurate to those recommendations. The difficulty is, number one, the market has not reached the area yet uh, for that type of development on this property. Um, and, and the owner is also trying to consolidate additional acreage uh, to assemble for, for, to get everything to be uh, contiguous. So uh, this is an interim use, a green interim use. Uh, because of the size, uh, it's over two, uh, and so it, it's not, it doesn't qualify for a community solar project. So we have to go to the Public Service Commission for a certificate. Um, so you need to make a recommendation with the mandatory referral. I spoke, you know, it, it just as it just happens, I spoke with my partner about the community meeting that they had. And uh, he mentioned to me just in passing that it was scheduled for whatever time, let's say 7 o'clock, and they were about to leave at 7.15, 7.20. No one had even arrived. One person ultimately uh, appeared, had some questions, was satisfied to my understanding, and that was the, the sum of it. So we don't believe, the property's pretty isolated, and we don't believe that there is any uh, citizen opposition, at least none that's been brought to our attention. So I do have some revisions, and I, I apologize that you're gonna see handwritten interlineations on Mr. Haller's revisions because um, uh, the uh, environmental uh, planning staff had some, um, had some additional concerns about his proposed revisions, and so we had to work out some, uh, some further modifications this morning. Uh, but with the edits that you see, we are, with the edits that you see on the handout, we are at one with your staff concerning the recommendations. And so I'll just go them, through them very quickly. Um, bullet point number one, First of all, let me accept um, sure. your proposed um, revisions into the record as applicants exhibit number one. Mm -hmm. okay. 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 So, okay. Right. so uh, in your staff report, uh, everything's just listed as a bullet point. They're not numbered. Okay. Uh, bullet point number one, uh, we agreed this morning that it just made more sense to delete it because there was a seeming conflict between one and two. Uh, bullet point number two, uh, we have agreed to retain 
the language that we had originally proposed to strike. And then we're also going to add the language typed in red with one exception. The word reforestation is going to be stricken from that second, from that, uh, from that second third sentence. Uh, going down to the fifth bullet point, um, as you can see, I have put a blue line uh, through the, the, la the second half of that revised condition. And so that, that bullet point is going to read, the applicant is strongly encouraged to install herbaceous cover with high pollinator vi value to the extent reasonably practicable. And, and I need to make one comment there. You saw in that aerial photograph, I mean, this was gonna be a church and the area was cleared. 2,000 parking spaces were paved. Um, and just the church never went forward. It went into foreclosure. Uh, you know, we find that putting the panels in the area where the parking compound was. You know, I, I don't think the mics are as strong as they are norm every other day, so just make sure you talk. Yeah, that's fine. Into okay, so, so we're, we're proposing to put solar panels on the parking lot. Most of the landscaped islands in the parking lot are going to be removed uh, in order to have an efficient solar field. Uh, but we are going to install uh, the plantings that are requested in this, in this bullet point. But, but I just, I, I didn't want anyone to think that we were going to leave all those landscape islands and plant in the islands. It's not efficient for what we're proposing to do out there. So you're going to remove, you're going to remove the, uh, the islands. Correct. And you're going to replace them with? We're going to plant in other places. Okay. Yeah. So we're, we're going to be going good to do to what? I'm there. sorry, I didn't hear that. Plant Pardon me? Place. Once you remove them, you're going to do what with it? Well, we're going to plant the the cover in other locations on site uh, but but we can't keep some of the islands are going to stay but the vast majority of the landscape islands are going to go away because we have this clear paved area and we w we just want to have have that area to be clean so the pa panels can go over top well you you said earlier that this was uh, area was pretty isolated how, how could you give me an ex define that for me well, if you look at the aerial photograph, um, as you come in, you have to you have to come in. I think it's Wheeler Hills Road off right. of Wheeler Road. It's a long, winding cul-de-sac that terminates at the property. The property itself is quite large, um, as you can see. Properties in the uh, front uh, along the Wheeler. Can you follow with the cursor? Yeah. I'm sorry. You, I'm, I'm so, you're, you're referring to what properties now, Mr. Gibbs? Well, if you look at the prop, at, look at the land mass in the front to the yeah. southwest, mm -hmm. uh, t between our property and Wheeler Road, that land area is mostly vacant. <coughs> southwest, you're going northwest, right there. There you go. Right. Um, and then there, there are two subdivisions to the, uh, to the east. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but we have a fair setback from our development between those. I mean, you know, the, the use itself is benign uh, in terms of lack of noise, um, and we are going to do a revised TCP2 uh, relative to the uh, plantings and the uh, preservation of woodlands on site. So we, we, you know, when I say the area is isolated, I mean, we, my client has had uh, problems with because it is so isolated with people coming back on Wheeler Hills uh, uh, Drive to uh, actually dump at the, on our property at the end of the cul-de-sac. I mean, it's, it's, it seems pretty isolated out there. I, I acknowledge that there are two subdivisions to the east, right. but, but, but the development is, is there, there is a buffer along the side uh, where the TCP uh, had save areas and uh, and again, the use itself is quiet. Well, that is District Seven, which I'm extremely familiar uh, with. I, that I pass <laughs> probably every day. I understand. And I would not define it as isolated, but that's just my definition. Okay. So basically, you're saying there's no noise. It's benign, and it's and you're putting in the the landscaping, the cover. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Um. Madam Vice Chair, do you have other questions? Not at all. Okay. Okay. Um, Ms. Hancock, you look like you're ready to say something. I was just going to say, I, I don't know if there were questions about what a solar array is. 
Well, that's a good thing. You can yeah, define that it. That would be helpful. That would be. Um, it is um, the panels that are located. This is the actual site right here. And what it is, and correct Wait, me but we have, we, Yeah, I know our screens have to catch up. Oh, that's, sorry. That's okay. Okay. We're there. Okay. Thank you. And these are the, the panels, which I apologize. I don't have a picture of a panel to put on here to be able to show you um, that they're sort of just aligned. What the, is just the, the, it is, they're all together in one section. Okay, so. Because we've, we've had um, other applications regarding solar panels, but when they're all aligned together, that's a solar array. That is my understanding. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. That <laughs> is my understanding. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Anything you care to add to that? Nothing. <laughs> okay. Does, does and, the and your comments with regards to the applicants? Um, Changes to the uh, recommendation. Just as as Mr. As the Mr. Gibbs mentioned this morning, we did uh, we did meet this morning okay. to discuss, and uh, we are um, we concur with the recommendations. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, was there anyone else here to speak on this matter? Does the board have any other questions of either Ms. Hancock or, or Mr. Gibbs? Okay, Mr. Gibbs. So when you say interim, you mean it's going to go for what 21 years? Well, uh, if you looked at well, one of the screens mentioned the potential for 15, 15, 15 years, it might be less than that. Okay, so yes. it can't, all right. Yes, it might be less than that. So I as mean, soon as the development the, catches up. That is yes. correct. The, the ultimate intention is to develop the property uh, as, a viable, uh, as, as a viable community with a mix of uses because of its proximity to the transit station. That's what's ultimately going to happen here. It's just we don't we don't find that the market exists for that type of dense development today. And it's proximity to Washington, D.C., because there's a lot of development on, on coming the out D.C. From, side. And coming out from the city into the county. Correct. Absolutely. <clears throat> Are there other questions? Um, if there are no other questions of anyone, is there a motion? Madam Chair, I move that we accept the recommendations of staff uh, and um, as further modified by applicant exhibit number one and approve the transmittal of MR-1909F to Mr. Tom Haller. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Abstentions. One, we have one abstention. So uh, four, um, zero, one. Okay. Um, Okay, so we were going to take item Thank six and seven. Much. We know they're not ready. Um, so wait a minute, wait a minute, Mr. Gibbs. Okay, so I think you're done for today here. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. It depends on what you have in plan uh, for, for right after I'm finished. If you have something planned for when I'm finished, I'm not done. Oh, well, no. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> but I am about to embarrass you because we, we did say happy birthday, but um, if I'm not mistaken... It's not just an ordinary birthday. I know. It's, it's, it, it's humbling to turn 60. Let me just say that. <laughs> and, it, and, it, and, it, and it's not truth, but it's fake news, too. <laughs> so anyway, we wish you a happy big birthday today. Thank you. Thank okay. you so happy much. Birthday. Thank you so and, and much. Your, and your partner owes you. Yes, as always. Thank <laughs> you, Thank you right. very much. Take okay. care. Everybody right. have a great day, and you thanks too. for acknowledging. Bye -bye. Appreciate it. So the board's going to take, um, I understand item six and seven is not ready. I know the 10 to 12 is going to take a little bit. So let's take a few, uh, uh, maybe a five-minute break, and we'll come back. Okay. Okay, no problem. We're going to go ahead and take, before we go 10 through 12, we're going to go ahead and take um, um, item 22, um, is a resolution of a, of a resolution for P, um, PGCPB number 1987 uh, for detailed site plan 19008. Um, where's Mr. Ship? Do you have anything to add to it? Okay. Um, is there a motion to approve? So move. Are we 22 and 23? It's, it's the case we're right now. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. I abstain. I said aye. Oh, okay, we have uh, the ayes have at least. Please let the record reflect that Commissioner Washington abstained. She was not here for this matter. The same thing with item 23. Is there a motion? Move approval. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. aye. Abstain. Uh, opposed? Please let the record reflect that Commissioner Washington abstained. Um, because she was not present at all for that matter. 
Um, uh, the eyes have it for both 22 and 23. Okay. Um, now, items 10 through 12. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the Planning Board. For the record, I'm Jeremy Hurlbut with the Urban Design Section. The project before you is item 10, a detailed site plan, DSP-13009-15, with companion cases, special permit, SP-130003, and secondary amendment, SA-130001-02. Riverdale Park Station. As a point of housekeeping, you should have received an additional backup dated July 25th with letters of support from the town of Riverdale Park and University Park. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. The, yes. The applicant is seeking approval of a detailed site plan for the construction of two multifamily buildings on parcel K and L, a special permit for dwelling units with ground floor commercial with without ground floor commercial uses and apartment housing for the elderly or physically handicapped. The secondary amendment to the K. Fritz property at Riverdale Park Town Center development plan for height as well as percentage of windows along the street and an adaptive reuse of a trolley car as a structure. The property is located in planning area 68 in Council District 3 in the northern portion of Prince George's County. The development is east of Baltimore Avenue or US Route 1, as highlighted here in red. This 5.4 acre portion, which are composed of lots L or K and L on the northeast corner of the overall DSP, which is made up of 37 acres. Um, is located wholly within the town of Riverdale Park and in the mixed-use town center zone, or MUTC zone. Most of parcel K, as shown here in the overlay graphic, is with a portion of parcel L are located in Aviation Policy Area 6, as discussed on page 15 of your staff report. The subject site today is the subject sites today are vacant. Parcel K and the and L um, are the subjects of this DSP are located in the northeast and southeast of the intersection of Van Buren Street and 47th. Van Buren Street going east west, 47th north and south. The site is flat, and some specimen trees have been retained on Parcel K. These are the master plan right of ways. Um, as you can see, the, the whole overall development is just east of Baltimore Avenue. The bird's eye further illustrates um, the surrounding development in relationship to proposed building seven and proposed <coughs> building eight. Um, this DSP shows, that, uh, or the rendering of the DSP shows uh, the two 85-foot-high, seven-story, multi-family buildings located here, uh, which, are, which has filed the secondary amendment for, and staff recommends approval of for an additional story of height to reach that seven stories. Building seven mm. will, be, will have 338 dwelling units with a six-level parking garage that will be constructed on the south and rear of the building. The parking garage will be accessed from 47th Street, just north of Van Buren, and primary entrances to the building will be located on either side of this vehicular entrance. An additional entrance will be located on the north side of the building. The applicant will, is also proposing to repurpose a historic trolley um, into a commercial space for either a restaurant or retail, about 450 square feet of use. Um, the trolley is shown here in red with, with its red roof. Um, and this part of the secondary amendment staff also supports. 
Building 8, which is south of Van Buren or the flyover, the CSX tracks, um, is made up of two uses with 99 multifamily units and 195 age restricted dwelling units. The building entrances will be placed across from the Village Green on the northwest corner of the building and as well as on Underwood Street, as well as the garage access from Underwood Street. This cross section was prepared as part of the justification for the additional height and shows their proposed buildings on the right, mm -hmm. reaching up to 82 feet in where the section was prepared on building seven, as well as the adjacent townhouses to the west and building five further to the west. A shadow study was also requested by staff and shown here. Th this shows the overall east elevation for the, the two buildings. Building um, seven is here shown in the blonde uh, brick and building eight in the different shades of gray. Uh, um, it, as part of the secondary amendment, the applicant is also seeking approval of the percentage of windows along the streets. Building seven, which is just shy of the 40% requirement, and building eight, which is just above 30%, is the reason for the request for the 30 percent which staff supports. The parking garages will be located in the rear of both buildings as previously stated and adjacent to the CXX tracks. The northern elevation includes a rendering with the proposed trolley car which will sit between this property and the existing playground that will be retained to the north of the site. Once again, the parking garage, uh, the southern elevation shows, uh, uh, which shows the parking garage, which projects beyond building seven. The applicant has composed, uh, has dressed the parking garage with composite metal panels and precast concrete with a brick pattern facade to address the MUTC requirements for parking garages along the street. And once again, you can see that parking garage as it's adjacent mm -hmm. to the flyover for the CXX tracks. This is Building 8's northern facade in relationship to the bridge over the CXX tracks and just directly um, opposite of Building 7 with the precast and metal composite panels. This is Building 8's southern elevation with that entrance on Underwood Street. A number of perspectives were prepared by the applicant. This one shows Building 7 from the Village Green. In addition, additional perspectives of Building 7 from the north and of the main entrance and from the rec area. These are perspectives of Building 8 with the main entrance on the northwest side of the site, as well as the interior courtyard, which fronts 47th Street and the southern entrance. Some additional perspectives in relationship to the townhouses and through it from other vantage points in the development, as well as perspectives from the bridge over the CXX tracks of the parking structures. The applicant proposes signages, signage for Building 7 and Building 8 in the area shown in red and will conform with the MUTC sign regulations and requirements. That step. Working with my coworkers in information uh, IMD, they prepared a flyover, which I'll play for you, that shows a 360 of the proposed project. The urban design staff recommends that the, the planning board adopt the findings of this report and approve detailed site plan DSP-13009-15 with companion cases spe special permit SP-1300 and secondary amendment SA-13001-02 as well as type 2 tree conservation plan TCP2-010-13 
Dash 03 for Riverdale Park Station, subject to the conditions in the staff report. The applicant will be presenting revised conditions, which staff has reviewed. We have no objections to these revised conditions. This concludes staff's presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, are there questions of Mr. Harlbutt at this time? Just, just one. Okay. All, all the buildings are all brick. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I, I meant to say that they are made of That's brick as well as cement panels and okay. fiber cement panels. So here on building seven, the, the gray areas at the top of the building that cap the building and break up the massing are of those cement panels. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there any additional questions for Mr. Hurlbutt? Okay, Mr. Taub. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. I think we're still morning, barely. <laughs> uh, uh, for the record, I'm Larry Taub with the firm of O'Malley, Miles Dallin, and Gilmore in Greenbelt. Uh, now we've just moved recently. And uh, very pleased to be before you again, uh, especially with regard to this. Just the microphone. I'm going to check on something real quick. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> We all set? Okay, hopefully that'll be a little bit better. Okay. I can't get any taller, I'm sorry. I'm doing the best no, I can do. Height. So. It's not the height, <laughs> it has nothing to do with it. Because the microphone's adjustable, has it? Right. It's just, um, today, it's the, the, the mics aren't as powerful today as they are normally. Hmm. Okay. Well, in any case, again, good morning. Okay. Barely, maybe it's this afternoon. Um, and um, as I indicated, we are here um, uh, yet again with regard to the Caperts property, and I want to just uh, remind everyone, going back um, six years ago, uh, we were here before the board with the original plans for this, and I would uh, recall, bring, um, bring it to the point that you may recall that these buildings that we're here with today were on the original plan, and so these were actually part of the original plan, and that has not changed. Um, what did change slightly was that um, we did originally plan three buildings. We're now uh, essentially taking all the density in those into these two buildings. So that's the, the genesis of that. But uh, this is just a continuation. And at the time, there was just not enough time to deal with this through the detailed site plan. And we were uh, directed by condition to come back with a detailed site plan when we were ready for the buildings. And here we are. Um, I would just want to introduce our team here briefly. We have um, going through with Nancy Randall, Wells and Associates in Traffic, Tim Davis, Soltes Engineering. We have Jim Volsky and Amine Amerikahimi from MVNA Architects. And we have Mark, uh, <laughs> Mark Regulinski in the back from Calvert Tract LLC representing the owner. Um, we are very pleased to be here this morning and accepting all conditions with the exception of conditions 1L and 3. And uh, Michael, if you can just take those. Thank you. Uh, we're suggesting a uh, few modifications to these particular conditions. Um, in the interest of uh, 1L has to do with the recreational facilities and all we're seeking to do here is to clarify that the recreational facilities uh, for which um, we need to identify those that are subject to the mandatory dedication, not all are. We, have, we believe we have um, uh, already uh, constructed or bonded um, those that are included within the mandatory dedication amount, uh, but we'll deal with that through the certification and that was the intent of the revisions here to just make sure there's some clarification um, that we are really going to specify the recreational facilities that are subject to the mandatory dedication. 
Uh, the second condition we're dealing with is condition number three, um, which has to do with the vibration analysis. Um, we believe that if a, a subsequent analysis is done, there will not be, uh, we will not note feelable vibrations as noted by the staff. However, um, we've noted in the event that a study is done, and there are, we will agree to put a note on a detailed site plan and the record plat. So we just want an opportunity to make that study and to see if, if we actually do need that or we do not need that. Uh, and I believe this, the staff is in, in agreement with those uh, modifications. Mr. Hurlbut? We are in okay. agreement with the modifications as presented. Okay. We're going to accept them into the record as applicants, exhibit number one. Thank you. Okay. And, and I do hope you all have been out to uh, the, what we was now called Riverdale Park Station because it's really, uh, I think it has, it has either met or exceeded the expectations that the board had when we were first before you six years ago, and uh, we're all very proud to be a part of the, this effort. And uh, we certainly uh, hope that uh, you'll be able to approve this application today and we can move forward with this uh, part of the development. We'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Commissioner I'm, Geraldo. I okay. have one question. I don't have any problem with, with uh, condition three. My concern is how are the residents or the new tenants going to be advised in advance that there may be vibration problems or feelable vibrations? Well, if there are, the, we've, we've agreed through this condition to put a note on the detailed site plan and the record plat, so it'll be on public notice, and that's what it will be. But how is that, how is that going to, I mean, this is, this, these are apartments, right? Correct. Okay. So a tenant goes in to get a lease or lease the apartment. How is he or she going to know that the apartment that she's renting, that there's vibration problems. They're not going to look at the DSP and they're not going to look at uh, the site plan. You, see, you know what I mean? I, I do. But I think, I, Commissioner Geraldo, I would suggest that that's more of an operational issue that I guess the owner will, will deal with, but I'm not so sure that's an issue that um, is here before you today. I mean, we're, we're doing what we can within the context of the plans that are going to be approved by the board. We're you know, we would agree to, to put the notes on those plans. I don't know. So the owners know, but. Yeah, but it tell. gives notice to the, I, I'll give you an example. When, when I sat, when I chaired the Board of Airport Zoning Appeals and there, was, there were situations where uh, they needed a variance, for example, to build closer to the airport, they put on the, we required them to put on the deed that, uh, or on the deeds to the properties that there was this issue Okay, and, and, and that way we would approve it. In this case, I'm just thinking of if, if you have senior citizens and they're going into this building, they have no idea about that. They rent the place and then they have issues with the feeling of the vibration. Don't you think that the owner has a duty to in, inform the tenants of this possible? That, that may be, but I would suggest two things. First of all, it's, it's, it'll be evident to everybody that you're right up against the railroad tracks. That's clearly evident to just, you go there to visit it, you will see that, and it's, it's very clear to anybody who's gonna be there. Um, secondly, uh, um, I, I think the, the rest of dealing with this is, becomes an operational issue, as I indicated, from management and, and how they deal with those issues. I mean, if there's gonna be issues there, they're gonna have to deal with it, but I, I think, um, I'm not sure that's within the, the jurisdiction of the board to deal with that, that particular issue. Uh, yes, if I may, uh, Jill Kozak from the Urban Design section. Uh, just to clarify, the vibration analysis that was submitted with this application is um, one from that was dated based on the previous DSP. Um, and that study showed that the uh, vibrations within the building would be below the FTA standards. It still, it was just seen to be a very minimal possible feelable vibration impact. Um, the applicant believes at this time with these new building designs that that would be removed completely. Um, but again, it would still be below the FTA requirement standard and therefore staff didn't feel it was necessary to provide disclosure to the residents. Um, it's more you, just- You feel that it is not? Correct, correct. Because it's below the FTA standard, disclosure to the residents is not necessary. And it's just more putting it up as a note on the plat and the DSP that again, there's minimal feelable vibrations. So, so we find it necessary to put it 
It says this property is located within close proximity to a railway and may be subject to Maybe. feelable vibration impacts. So it's enough that you want to put it on the on the uh, the plat, but not enough to tell people. But not enough to tell people. Well, <laughs> I, if if I may, um, again, this is based on an old study, so they have to update their study, but the old study didn't have them over a particular threshold. So we want them to update the, the old study, mm -hmm. do a new study, and and if that new study does show that they're over the threshold, then this note will kick in. So again, we're, we're, we're not dealing with a feelable vibration at this point. We're saying if there is, because right. they need to update the study. We don't wanna have to come back if there is. We're just saying if there is, then you put a note. Because at this point, we don't have anything in the study that says that there will be. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. It go seems ahead. to be if, if okay if there if the new noise study indicates that there is, um, it is over the threshold. Then you put a note on the plat, okay. And then he's still wondering how you notify the tenants. I guess. Which, well, again, yeah. the the if that happens to be the, the case. You know, technically, the the applicant's attorney is correct that you know at site plan, what we're looking at is things that DPI can check at the issuance of of building permit okay. and then at occupancy. Okay, Th these are the two triggers that a site plan can effectively uh, regulate because we have those two triggers. If you don't do something, you don't get a UNO or you don't get a building permit. So deep this is this is not really conducive to that. Um, it's something that we've done in the past in in different ways, but you know a site plan is not actually designed to handle things like putting a disclosure in a rental agreement. That doesn't mean that it couldn't be a proffer. That doesn't mean it couldn't be something that they agree to do. But a site plan itself is not going to regulate that because they will already have a building permit. They will already be open for business. Okay. And so they could do it or not do it. And, and we really wouldn't have any way to check or to enforce. But if it was a problem, um, DPI would, would um, check it in terms of the um, use of occupancy permit, right? Well, again, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's because it's, it's not a physical development right. of the site, it's a little outside the purview of a, of a site plan. That doesn't mean that they can't proffer, but it's, it's not it. really sure an enforceable issue under I mean, the site I, plan. I understand, I appreciate, I appreciate, and I understand that it's not something that we consider, but I'm looking down the road. And my concern are the tenants, especially if it's, it's senior housing and you've got, it may never happen, it may be a non-issue. But I think it's the, the, the developer, the owner, is, has to consider that uh, for the benefit and the health and safety of the tenants. That's all. So, Mr. Taub, I mean, that may be something you want to talk with your clients about briefly if you want to take a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. I will tell you, I grew up right near the railroad. Um, and even now, I live close to a railroad. It's not adjacent to it. I don't necessarily feel the vibrations. I hear the, the whistle. And, you know, if it's something that's minor, you know, if you're talking a minor vibration where you're not, where it doesn't cause harm to anyone or or your property or the pictures aren't falling off the wall and things aren't falling off the table, um, um, you know it may not be a problem if if we're talking something minor. Um, if you know if we're talking something where you could have result in property damage, that's 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 a problem. But um, you could, you, you could, as council indicated, proffer. I grew up near the railroad, and to me, it was the most relaxing thing in the world. Um, but you know, not, it wasn't causing any damage or anything. Well, huh? I did. It was, it was uh, soothing. And even now, I live near the, near one, and it's like I hear, you know, I hear. That has to do with age, Madam Chair. <laughs> when I grew up, I was I said born. When you grew up, it was okay. Uh, I, I was, when even when I was born in that household. Um, I, I, you know, it's just cool. So, okay. Um, anyway, it's some, do you need a moment? Well, Madam Chair, first of all, let me say, first of all, we, we, I would agree with Jill. We do believe very firmly that when the study is done, we're not going to have a problem. Okay. Because based on the construction techniques, the type of construction that's going to be, that's, we, we just don't believe that's going to be a problem. You know, in the event that there is some reason to, to be there, 
I still maintain that it really is more of an operational issue. I mean, if if, if tenants start complaining, there's going to they have to deal with that issue in some fashion. I mean, but I respectfully, I'm not so sure that it's something that ought to be dealt with here in terms of that. That becomes how I mean they need to be able to rent these apartments and. Uh, if that's an issue, and people will see, as you said, Madam Chair, that this is right next to the railroad tracks, uh, it's not like we're hiding something. And people can look at that, but we really believe it's a very small chance. I mean, uh, we- We're not talking my cousin, Benny. Uh, okay. No. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> but um, it, it's the kind of thing where I think, um, I think the notes that are, uh, that the staff asks us to put on the DSP and on the record plat, are really sufficient to to deal with this issue now. And again, the operational issues, I mean, there's only so much anybody can do as you look out there, there's always gonna be operational issues. Something will always come up that's gonna be something that either you didn't anticipate or that becomes an issue somewhere along the way. That's the nature of operating apartments. And I think everybody's gonna be very cognizant and aware that this may be an issue if, if it's determined to be. And again, we feel very firmly that it's not gonna be. Uh, we're talking about just an eventuality as, as I guess we have to, that there may be. Um, and they're all rental units. Yes, ma'am. So I got, because I, I actually share, share my colleagues' concerns, and I, I guess a, some degree of comfort, if they are rental, then they don't have to renew a lease. Right. I, I would probably feel a lot stronger about it if they were right. purchased. Understood. You know, because that's a longer term commitment. So. Right. right. And nobody's going to do anything that's going to hurt their business model. So. I would just ask that the owners consider that. Yeah. That's all. That's fine. Um. So if your request is that they consider, um, right. how are we putting that? Madam yeah. Chair, if, I, if you want me to just take a moment, just. Sure, take a moment. Thank okay. you. Okay, Mr. Town. Um, Madam Chair, we think if you put this in as a finding of the in the resolution, then it will be on the record there, and um, and I think that that probably will be sufficient to address the issue, and make sure that it, people know the planning board addressed it and raised it, and uh, I think then we'd be covered, we'd be fine with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we'd Thank like you. to work, sure. appreciate um, that, Ms. Kosak, with the wording of the finding um, and and. Um, to, to note that uh, um, the board is concerned about um, uh, the possible vibrations, depending on what the noise studies show, and that the applicant, but you know, we ask that there be some consideration of notifying um, the tenants. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, are there any other questions, did, or did you have anything else, Mr. Taub? No, ma'am. Um, was there anyone else to speak on this matter? Okay. Uh, is there a motion? And, we sh and if there is, it's, it should be one motion per pertaining to the um, detailed site plan, special permit, and secondary amendment. Right. Uh, Madam Chair, I move that we adopt the findings of staff uh, and also uh, include uh, an additional finding uh, pursuant to the discussion on the record with regards to possible vibration and notification to uh, tenants and if staff would work with council to ensure that it embodies the uh, discussion. Um, and with that, approve DSP-13009-15, SP-13003, SA-13001-01, and TCP-2-010-13-02. Dash zero three, along with the associated conditions as outlined in staff's report and as further modified in applicant exhibit number one. I'll second that. I'd also like to thank the, uh, the owners for uh, taking that into consideration. I think it's important 
Um, they've done a fine job with that, uh, the development there. It's been a, a great improvement. And so I know that they, they also want what's best for them. So I'll second. That's great. We have a motion and a second. Um, well said, Commissioner Gerardo. Uh, excuse me one minute. Uh, staff would just like to clarify. It appears um, um, Commissioner Washington was reading from a, a part that had an error on the SA number. It's SA13001-02. Oh, oh, thank okay. you. Yeah, because it okay. does say I'll accept yeah. it. Okay. So we have a um, motion and a second. Uh, I don't think, is there any additional discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. Some of you, I, Ms. thank you. Hey, Mr. Gingles. Some of you I haven't seen in a long time, Ms. Randall, so good to see you. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Chairman. Thank um, you. All. Okay, Mr. Gingles, we were about to break for lunch. Let him start no, I was saying we were about to, but we can we can go okay. for it if you want. It doesn't to. matter. To me. Okay, Ms. Where is so we you you got in here in the nick of time because we were get about to break for lunch. But are you ready to go? We can do it in three minutes. Oh, excellent. Three minutes. Okay. Try two. Okay, let's okay see. hold up, hold up. Okay, <laughs> okay, Mr. I'm Bishop. Now. 12, okay, we're taking 20. taking. I'm putting my timer on now. Number item number six. Um, detail site plan of 99044-17 for the um, mall at Prince George's Plaza at Miller's Ale House. Oh, my gosh. Oh, really? It's very different. All right. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the Planning Board. For the record, my name is Andrew Bishop with the Urban Design Section. Item 6 is a detailed site plan proposing the construction of a 8,285 square foot eating and drinking establishment at okay, Prince Mr. George's Bishop, Plaza. You speak up. Yeah, <coughs> we're having mic problems today, problem. especially. Yeah. So. Can you hear me? Hear you now. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> okay, thank you. As a matter of housekeeping, you should have received an additional backup for this application, which includes staff's revised recommendations and referrals from DPI and the city of Hyattsville. Revised findings, you mean? Conditions? And conditions. Okay. Got it. The site is located in central Prince George's County in planning area 68, Council District 2. The property is located in the northwest quadrant of the intersection of Maryland 410 and Belcrest Road. The, <coughs> the site is in the MUI zone and bound to the north by Maryland, south by Maryland 410, multifamily apartments to the northwest by commercial office space and east by Belcrest Road. The site is within the transit district overlay zone. The, the regulations pertaining to this application are further discussed on pages eight through 11 of the, on the, in the staff report. The aerial photo shows the site and the existing mall on the property, which is outlined here in red. The site is currently developed and, and includes minimal topography. The master plan right away map shows the arterial of Maryland 410 south of the site. This exhibit shows the general location of this DSP amendment, which is outlined here in yellow. This exhibit is an enlarged site plan showing the location of the freestanding eating and drinking establishment outlined here in red. <coughs> the previous DSP was for infrastructure and approved the pad site for this biz building and was not subject to any of the required design standards for the TDDP. However, the resolution noted that future applications related to the construction of the building for the pad site would be subject to the standards of, this D of the TDDP. This application has been filed for the building's construction. The proposed eating and drinking establishment is located within the existing parking compound on the southwestern side of the site. The building is set back approximately 70 feet to the front vestibule and 80 feet to the remainder of the building from the curb in violation of the TDDP standards. 
This setback and, and freestanding nature of the proposed eating and drinking establishment is characteristic of suburban design standards and does not reflect the more compact Main Street character envisioned by the DDDP. This plan shows the proposed landscaping on site, which was approved with a prior application and includes the required amount of planting for the site. The layout proposes a micro bioretention in front of the building and staff still finds, and finds this site plan insufficient and does not activate the streetscape as envisioned by the TDDP. The applicant was advised at the time that the future application for the building would be subject to the standards and need to conform. The architectural elevations and signage for the building were evaluated with this DSP and were found acceptable include <coughs> high quality building materials. During the review of the re <coughs> uh, during the course of the review, the applicant was informed that the proposed layout was not in conformance with the TDDP and the standards and requ and requested the building's placement be moved and the stormwater be relocated to address the standards in the TDDP. The applicant's plan has not relocated the building and stated that the final stormwater plan was approved by DPI and any revisions to the stormwater would be costly. Staff finds the applicant's plan deficient with regard to the required building step back and notes that this revised plan submitted at the 35 day deadline did still did not activate the streetscape and meet the guidelines of the TDDP. This plan shows the proposed utility connections for the property. With the exception of the storm drain pipe located here in the front of the building, here in green, the proposed utilities are located in the rear and side of the building, shown here with outlined in the red bubble. This illustration was submitted by the applicant and shows a cross section of their proposed layout. This exhibit shows <coughs> a rendering of, of the space. This exhibit shows it, the existing building setbacks along Route 410, which shows the, the, their proposed building here outlined in yellow with at, seven, at a proposed setback of 70 feet. And it was noted that none of the existing buildings along the corridor, which were developed prior to the TDDP, were much further than this. This exhibit shows the applicant's originally revised layout as submitted at the 35-day deadline. The layout proposes a building setback, which is 70 feet from the back of the curb, contrary to the TDDP requirements that the setback be 25 feet from the back of curb. This exhibit shows staff's initial recommendation as described on pages 8 through 10 of the report and proposes to move the building directly behind the existing sidewalk, 35 feet from the curb, creating a consistent frontage and recommends program elements, design features, and site furnishings such as in a large dining area on the east and west side of the building, relocation of the stormwater facilities, and addition of street furnishings. The addition of these features would more closely comply with the TDDP standards and activate the streetscape without requiring unreasonable cost or deviating substantially from the utility of the proposed development for this intended use. This exhibit shows the City of Hyattsville's suggested layout for the subject application, which was included in the additional backup that you received for this application. It proposes bioretention on the west and east sides of the building in a large outdoor seating area and plaza located near the access drive to the mall. 
Staff has consulted with the city of Hyattsville and Depay in developing a new exhibit, which is seen in the next slide. This exhibit shows staff's revised recommendation, which was developed after working with the applicant and the city of Hyattsville, as well as Depay. In working with Depay, they indicated that the on-site stormwater currently was under construction and the storm pipe was and the storm pipe was located in front of the building and installed this pipe is outlined here in a red bubble red bubble in their recommendation depi noted that the building should not be relocated more than 10 feet from this pipe staff's revised recommendation incorporates this and proposes a building setback 55 feet from curb with an enlarged outdoor dining area on the east and southeast portions of the building. The outdoor dining area, plaza, gateway feature, and additional design elements shown in staff's exhibit improve the pedestrian experience <coughs> and pedestrian connectivity along the frontage of the site and incorporate, have been incorporated into the design. In accordance with the City of Hyattsville's and Depay's recommendation, it should be noted that outdoor dining in front of the <coughs> building could, be inclu could include additional street furnishings and site elements and further activate the streetscape. <laughs> the following <coughs> photos show how some of the adjacently developed projects in the area have followed the guidelines of the TDEP and propose the building closer to the street and activate the streetscape by including artwork, street trees, and site furnishings. These elements have been conditioned to be included on the subject application. The following photos <coughs> show the existing streetscape in front of and in the vicinity of the subject application and illustrate if house, if some of the elements conditioned in the revised recommendation were included could activate the streetscape and meet the guidelines of the TDDP. The detailed site plan was evaluated for the conformance of the requirements of the 2010-2016 approved Prince George's Plaza Transit District Development Plan and the Transit District Overlay Zone, the Prince George's County Zoning Ordinance, the pre previous approvals, the 2010 Prince George's County Landscape Manual, the Woodland and Wildlife Habitat Ordinance, and the Tree Canopy Coverage Ordinance. The detailed site plan conforms with this design criteria. The Urban Design Section recommends the Planning Board adopt the findings of this report, staff's revised condition recommendations and conditions, as well as the applicant's revised conditions that have been Reviewed and reviewed by staff and approved detailed site plan nine nine zero four four dash seventeen subject to the conditions in the staff report and the revised memorandum. The following exhibit was sent to the staff in response to staff's revised conditions on June twenty fourth and will be discussed further by the applicant. This concludes staff's presentation. Was, was that, did that mean you were getting me to say something else? No, okay. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions of Mr. Bishop? Mr. Gingles. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chairman. For the record, Andre Gingles, an attorney with offices in Laurel, Maryland. And uh, here with me today, I have Mr. Mark Gamble, who is the uh, Pennsylvania Real Estate Investment Trust. They're the owners of uh, the mall at Prince George's. I also have various representatives from Miller Ale House, which is the proposed uh, new restaurant. Uh, Mr. Ray Holden, who's the president, uh, along with uh, Shane Finster and John Leonard, who've been working with us and the staff in the city of Hyattsville over the past work with us, us and the city of Hyattsville. Over the past 
over the past few weeks. That's good. Um, so in order to eliminate that very long presentation that I was going to go through, um, let me just say, first of all, there's been a lot of discussions with ourselves and the staff uh, leading up, including today. And what I have, if I would ask uh, Mr. Moseley to pass out, is essentially what amounts to two staff exhibits, excuse me, two applicant exhibits. The first being a revised set of conditions to the already revised staff recommendation which um, we have shared with the staff in the city of Highsville. The second being a series of three photos which explains uh, the way that the proposed uh, outdoor patio seating is the to be done uh, with the okay, building. Okay, got it, okay, okay. I'm sorry, Go Okay. Ahead. I, the first I is uh, what you might refer to as applicants exhibit A is a revised set of conditions the second are a series of three photos. Uh, they could be uh, applicants exhibit B1, B2, and B3, which um, is the uh, area of the proposed outdoor seating and how it will be done, again, which we've shared with the city of Hyattsville and with staff, and there is agreement on applicants exhibit uh, A. Um, just a, a couple of things to note for the record that the applicant was very much aware and, and, and we participated on behalf of the Mall of Prince George's in the revised plans. We, we had some concerns doing the adoption of the TDOZ about some of the transitional development that would occur. As you know, if you look at Plan 25 and even those sector plans, the idea is that there are at least three downtowns where there's going to be some directed county investment which will lead to redevelopment. Um, I was before you a couple of months or maybe a little bit long ago uh, with regard to the Boulevard at Capital Center redevelopment. There's been significant investment there, the county hospital, county government offices. That's yet to occur there, but will, we hope, occur at some point. But the owner of the mall has always thought that its redevelopment would occur prominently, predominantly in the rear of the mall first because the value of the land up on 410 would be at the point that a variety of things could be redone and that height and intensity could be built along there. There aren't transitional provisions and so the staff is essentially forced to look at what's in the plan uh, and press for those design standards to be implemented at that time. Uh, we placed the building where, as a result of some infrastructure that was approved and some other issues, because it, that stormwater does take care of for a lot of the parking lot, where we thought the building best fit. Uh, the discussions, uh, particularly with the city and with uh, your staff, have resulted in this set of revised recommendations. Uh, I'm comfortable to speak to you about those, but the staff, excuse me, the applicant would essentially ask that this uh, revised, um, excuse me, this revised set of, of recommendations and conditions in applicants exhibit A uh, be what the planning board consider and take action favorably on. That concludes uh, our presentation, but I have all these gentlemen here. Should there be any particular questions that we need to respond to? Okay, first let me, um um, accept your proposed um, exhibits into the record. Um, um, you've identified them, so we're going to use your identification. AE ex applicants exhibit A is the applicants' proposed revisions to the revised conditions, and um, the three pictures um, depictions of the L House and and um, the outdoor um, alfresco portion will be <laughs> deemed applicants exhibit B1, B2, and B3 and they are accepted into the record as identified. Okay. Yes, um, uh, I, I, Madam I, I, Vice Chair. Uh, this is not a question for Mr. Gingas, but I would like the staff to go back uh, and reorient us, like me again of the location of this site. We're, we're, I'm, I'm familiar with the, the, the plaza, the Prince George's Mall, uh, but where is it actually located the, the, this ap application is located where the outline of the uh, <coughs> yellow right. box is. This is it. This and is this at location. The Down okay. here at the southwest corner. So right on 410. It's right on, right on the... Right, right along That's 410. 410. It fronts 410. This is the access drive to the mall. 
This is the Mall of Prince George's. This is the Olive Garden. This is the Outback Steakhouse. And this is the bank at the corner. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you're at the bank, it's on the, to the right. Right across the street. Oh, no, no. no. On, on the far side right. of the site. OK. It's to their right. opposite side. Mm. Oh, OK. It's, a direct, it, it's located directly across from Editor's Park. Mm -hmm. Yes. OK, thank you. I, I've got a question. Okay. So what staff is agreeing to is that the building does not have to be, the building itself does not have to be as close to 410, but with the outdoor garden, that will... Yeah, the is outdoor right? plaza. And with the pl yeah, in front. An outdoor dining area. Right. So it's, that'll bring it closer. So instead of having the building right up there, you're going to have the building set back a little more. And then in front, you'll have the, as Madam Cheer says, the alfresco portion. Staff felt that including those elements would mitigate some of that um, building setback that the applicant is proposing. And what's the position of staff? Um, we're in agreement with that the building be located 55 feet from the back of curb. 55 feet provided there's the outdoor garden. That Correct. Okay. And, and if I may, staff, staff in the city of both asked for it to be a more extensive plaza element and have actually specified some various elements to be incorporated therein, which we also as the applicant with? concur. You also have the two letters from, from the, uh, the town of Riverdale. I know you've been speaking with the city of Hyattsville, but you have the letters from the town of University Park and the town of Riverdale Park. I or do you need a sim? No, um, unless they're, they uh, include items to which you need me to address, I do not. I, have you seen them? Madam I Chair, don't. Uh, those, those are for a different case. Those really? are for the uh, Riverdale Park okay. case okay. that we okay. that you just uh, approved. Okay. Is that really okay? But they came in about the same time, so the confusion is okay. understandable. So somehow they got with this one. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's bad. That's really amazing. Okay. Thank you. That's a problem. Oh yeah, that was okay. Okay, thank you. Um, other questions? Yeah, uh, uh, Mr. Gingles, would you care to comment on uh, one of the things in staff's report speaks to the 50% um, of ground floor facade facing 410 be transparent materials, i.e. glass? We've actually, um, and you can see some of it in the redesign of the photos we provided. Uh, because those are roll-up doors, so they provide glass doors ceiling to uh, the height. We, we um, ended up, uh, after some clarification, clarification from staff, it being just under 58%. Okay. Okay. What? So we don't, you don't, we don't need that alternative development standard because it's addressed with your, because that's a... The, the, not the one that we requested, but the one that reduces the minimum clear height. Right, so we, we do we, need exactly yes. okay. okay. Did you say roll up doors? Yeah, yeah, they, be, yeah if you right see them right there on the oh, I thought you had Manny one here. here, yeah, here. Okay, which have become glass. fairly popular. They're glass, yes. Oh, okay. Other questions, uh, Mr. Gingles? Uh, nothing more at this time, okay. Madam Chair. All right, so um, let's have Mr. Chandler come forward on behalf of the city of Hyattsville. Thank you, Madam Chair. For the record, Jim Chandler, uh, Assistant City Administrator with the city of Hyattsville. And recognizing that I stand between you and your, your summer break, I, I will be brief. <laughs> um, the, we, the city has a, had a very productive conversation with both your staff and the applicant. Uh, we are agreeable to the updated revised conditions uh, and exhibit. Uh, the city's point, and, and uh, Commissioner Giraldo picked up on that, is um, we recognize there is a need for a variance. Uh, what we asked for is mitigation, substantive mitigation, um, and it was our belief that not only outdoor activation, but uh, it be covered in some way with pergola uh, that allowed the operator to 
um, monetize those improvements, but also I, I think more closely aligned with the intent of the TDDP. And so provided the conditions uh, are met, um, we are supportive of the uh, resolution moving forward. Okay. Are there are questions of Mr. Chandler? Thank you very much, and um, we appreciate your very astute comments. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gingles. N nothing further, Madam Chair. Well, there is no one else on the sign-up sheet. Was there anyone else who wished to speak? Um, does the board have any questions of anyone? Mr. Bishop, did you have anything else to add? No, ma'am. Is there a motion? Madam Chair, I move that we adopt the findings of staff in addition to the revised findings as outlined in staff's memo of July 24, 2019, and approve the alternative development standard uh, for two, 2016, approve Prince George's Plaza uh, elements as outlined in staff's report A1 through 2, A1, 2, and 3. Disapprove alternative development standard uh, B1 is outlined in staff's report. Um, let's see. And uh, address the um, um, alternative development standard as outlined in applicant exhibit A is so, re so revised. And I don't think, and also revised in staff. Good gracious. Okay, <laughs> the Alternative Development Standard 2016 A1 uh, as uh, revised in staff memo uh, dated July 24th, 2019 and also uh, as revised in applicant exhibit number A and approved DSP-99044-17 along with the associated conditions as outlined in staff's report as further revised in staff's memo dated July 24, 2019, and as further revised in applicant exhibit number A. We have a motion, a very thorough one, and a second. Um, is there discussion? All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Um, so that takes care of item six. And then we have, um, so we need to, to do a um, item seven. Um, is the resolution which needs to be modified, uh, modified consistent with the motion. Who will so approval, Madam Chair? We have a motion and a second for item seven. Um, is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. My Thank you, members. Have a great summer. Thank, Thank you. you. My we'll important continue question. your great summer. My important question for the day is Mr. Hunt. Is there no legislation? No. Okay. My important question is Mr. Hunt. Is there any additional business to come before this planning board today? Madam Chair, that is all that we have today. Okay. Planning board is adjourned and is in recess for the summer. We will resume on September the 12th. Bam. Okay. Mm -hmm.